Welcome back from the holidays to the Player 4 Podcast. What? Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Hello, I am Tristan, a.k.a. Shagrazir on the Rooster Teeth website. I am Alex, a.k.a. Chaos Black 21 And I am Malachi, a.k.a. Kiba. You're making fun of me, Alex. What? How am I making fun of you? <laughs> you were making fun of my sexy, smooth voice by doing one of your own and trying to outdo me, and you, you managed to outdo me, so... Forget oh. you, man. I, I outsued you. I, I I did wasn't really trying, but yeah. <laughs> he outsmoothed me. Yes, we are back after the holidays. Not that we actually took a break because we never stop working here at the Player Four Cod Podcast Cod, Cod, podcast. Cod podcast. <laughs> The cod piece. The cod piece. The Player Four cod piece never Coming gives up, back. never surrenders. It always has your back and your front. All right, that's a good way to start the episode. So, we 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 talked about what everybody was going to be doing with their holidays. Did did we talk about what everybody did do with their holidays? Uh, how was your How was your Happy New Year's? Because it's 2016 now. We're like almost a year old or something. We are. February 10th was our first podcast. Codpast. Yeah. No podcast. <laughs> Did I say it wrong? No, you said it right. I just. <laughs> <laughs> February tenth. So holy crap, we're like a month away. Like a little, like a month and a couple days. Yes, we are almost there. Also, then a few weeks after that is my birthday. <sighs> February tenth. Uh, February tenth is the day after my birthday. Are you gonna get me a present? Uh, you know your present. Do I have to give the prior part podcast my present? Yes, actually, you ha- you have to forfeit your present to no. the Player Four podcast. Oh, <laughs> it's like forced regifting. <laughs> so, it's not, it's not going to be regift because it's going to be the brand new year of it. <laughs> it's the new Player Four podcast. See, I had a cooler New Year than everybody because I grabbed my friends from here in Boston, shoved them in my car, and drove them to New Jersey, where we met up with another longtime friend of ours, and we we had New Year's fun and food and games with them, and stayed over in New Jersey. We played Clue. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say the first part that you said, Tristan, where you're like, I grabbed my friends and I shoved them in the car, I for a second was like, uh oh, is this going to take a turn for the worst? He oh. shoved them in his car. Does that mean like he shoved them in his trunk, then he took them to some shady part of town and dropped them to into a ditch? I mean, I did that I did that after the the New Year's party, so yes. <laughs> but we had the New Year's fun first, so it's okay. Oh, okay. So it's okay. Well, for New Year's, for my New Year's, I went over to my friend's house, I kind of do this every year, and hang out with a bunch of other friends, Uh, played games, we played the Jackbox Party Pack, if you have played that at all before. No, what what, what is the Jackbox Party Pack? So, well, this is the Jackbox Party Pack 2. Uh Uh-oh, it's Uh, it's a sequel, the son of the Jackbox Party Pack. Yeah, there's two ga- two different versions. They have uh, a couple similar games, but otherwise they have different games in them. And what you do is you uh, play it on your console or whatever you get it started, but pretty much everything that happens happens on your phone. You connect to uh, the Jackbox website and use the room code that you get, and so all your friends can play on their phones and answer questions and party just, pack uh, it's a phone thing this party pack no it's it's a game that you can download on your console and you it, it's played from your console and the fact that you start it on your console you choose what game you want to play after that it gives you a room code that uh you type in you have to go to jackbox.tv on your phone Go go to Jackbox TV, or you could use your tablet too. It's it's it, you can use your tablet, and you put in that code. You put in what name you want to be, which the whole time, the whole weekend uh, that we played, I was <laughs> Baggins. <laughs> <laughs> Just terrible. I'm gonna have to bleep that. <laughs> See that? That's totally. Yeah. So then after that. Once everyone's in the game, you start the game, and from then on, it's all done with your phone. Yep. Okay. yep. Wait, so wait, 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 wait. By the way, you you bleep out stuff in this? 
Yeah, the podcast. Yes. The podcast we bleep out cursors. It's G rated. It's yeah. We try to keep it as Somewhat. close to as as possible. Although I mean, if you've how been, how is Alex surviving in this? <laughs> <laughs> because he's because we time. bleep him. That's how he survives it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I have a terrible mouth. But anyways, so when, since you're talking about stuff dealing with your phone, I'm looking forward to that new Pokemon Go app. I hope they, I hope they do well with it. Pokemon Go app? What? Now you can be on the go and be like, my Pokemans, let me show you no, them. Oh, no, it uses real life. So like, as you're like walking with the app on, you can, they'll say, oh, there's a Pokemon nearby and it'll tell you like your location you have to go to and you have to actually walk, travel there. And then capture the Pokemon. And oh then my God! Like, it's the dark. It's the dark side of VR. <laughs> yep. It's getting kids to walk into the woods and down scary <laughs> alleys because you know they're probably either in the city or not in the city. So regardless, it's gonna be like there's a Pokemon nearby, and it walks you into some like awful, awful den of evil. Oh, you know what would be hilarious? It'd be such a dick move. Another bleep there is going to be, is going is if you know they were like you would be hilarious and they put a Pokemon in like an adult shop. <laughs> it's like it's in the adult video store. Darn it! And they're like, no, I I need it to complete my collection. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going in. And then, no, no, then then the kids join together. And they, uh... They, they get the trench on, coat? They get, yeah, they get on top of each other with a trench coat and a hat, and they just try to walk in casually. <laughs> it's just three kids on top of each other with a fake mustache. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and then one of them goes, I caught the Pokemon! He's like, get those kids out of here! <laughs> they're, they're just oblivious to everything else in the store. <laughs> Oh, God. And it's some kind of cat, of course. Innuendo. Innuendo. It's gotta all be innuendo. It's an innuendo Pokemon. It's innuendo-mon. Innuendo-mon. <laughs> uh, Alright, so Pokemon is now ruining kids' lives in real life. Making them go into porn shops. You know, I'm still... I, I still am pit trying to pitch my idea to Nintendo and say, Hey, you know how much bank that you could make if you just put... All of the uh, worlds, like all all of the islands and countries together that you played over the years into one game, one massive game, they will make so much money. And they turn around and they go, but you know how much bank we're already making just remaking that plumber game? <laughs> so much bank. Now he flies through stars and shit. So we could do your idea, or we could keep do not doing your idea and still make the same amount of money. <laughs> money bath, money shower. Be an asshole, Nintendo. They can't help it. They they've learned the secret to making money, and it's the same secret that John Madden learned: put his name on a video game and then sit back and watch the money come in. But 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 think about it. How awesome would it be if you if they had all the worlds in one one area or in one game? And you could decide which area you wanted to start in. But this so kind of just sounds like a reversing of the same paradigm that created Smash Brothers, which was taking all the heroes from all the different games and putting them in one world. You're not fighting each other. Though. I know, I know. I'm, I'm not saying that you are. Story. It just seems like it, it kind of sprouts from the same base idea of take all the things and put them in one. Well, don't they have that with the Lego Dimensions and those other little kitty games with the little figures? What? The multi plat or multi universe. <laughs> Alex does not approve of of your connection that you're trying to make. <laughs> no. You know, I'm saying I've heard, I've seen it before since I work at Target. I've seen the Lego Dimensions and I work at Target. Uh, I've seen things, man. I've seen things. This is pretty terrible. I think that, that you know that'd be cool. I'd play it, but I mean. They're probably just like, yeah, we've already got that game. It's called Smash Brothers. It's not a fighting game, though. <laughs> you're, not, you're going through an actual story. Do I turn into the different heroes as I go to the different areas, or can I go, no, like, you beat up? You, no, you, you start, you can choose which area you start in. You choose your character, and you're, that's your character through all the all the different islands and countries, then. So I'm, like, swinging on vines in, like, DK world, but I'm Link, and then I go and I save Princess Peach, and I'm still Link. 
Sure, yes. Sure, yes. But I I don't understand what how you're getting this <laughs> that, how you're getting this comparison. It's because your description is very, no, very... Was, I put the two worlds in the same game and I got to play the same character between the two worlds. What the, oh my I, what's god, the problem? No, all the Pokemon. Oh, what did you think I was saying? Mario and DK and Star no, Fox. No, I was saying Pokemon put oh. all the different countries and all the stuff throughout the years. <laughs> How do... <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> that makes a little bit more sense. I mean, they are all in the same world. They're just not all in the same game. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Put all of them in one Actually. game. So, moving away from Pokemon... <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, I can't believe we've been talking about Pokemon this long. I, it, I blame you. I thought we got off the subject. That's why I kept talking about all the other Nintendo characters. No, we didn't get off the subject just because you co were confused at what I was saying. Okay, I was really hoping we had gotten off the subject, and I was wrong. <laughs> um, you can go to your Fallout. I got had someone ask me if I played Fallout recently. I haven't. You're like I already beat it. No. <laughs> I already. Beat it. You can't. Shh, don't tell me about it because I already beat it. I don't want to spoil anything for you. I'm gonna go over here and keep doing my work. Yeah, I saw. I'm at level 42. Oh, look at you! What's the cap? 50? No, there is no cap. Oh. You there can literally been. play and unlock every skill and all that. Well, but can you get veteran levels of the skills like you could in Skyrim? I would guess that you would probably get to, like, level 100 and then get, like, like what Tristan said, like, veteran thing, or things that you get um, after you've hit max level. Well, yeah, because in there's, Sky... There's no way that they, that they have put something in. Who's? I don't even know if anybody's gotten to level 100 at this point. <laughs> well, that, in that's a long time. In Skyrim, you your main level went up for every, like... 10 or 5 or whatever of your individual skill levels that went up. So you were artificially capped once all of your skills hit 100, then whatever level you were at was the maximum. Then one of the updates introduced veteran levels to those where you could set a skill tree back to 0 and start leveling it up again. So that's probably what it's going to be, is the, if it's based on your skills or whatever your level, it's probably going to be, like Tristan said, based on your maximum skills you obtain. I just don't... I was told there is no level cap, so I don't know how you could... I, I doubt it. There's no way there isn't a level cap. There, there's some way where you can... <laughs> I am level 99.99. level cap is when you reach and you max out all of your skills. That's what. That's the level cap. Oh, well, wait, are you discerning a difference between the number of levels in a skill tree versus the number of perk points you have? Yes. Because you didn't get a new perk point every time a skill tree leveled up. You got a new perk point every time your outside, your, your overall character level went up. Yeah, that's what up. I'm saying. And so you can't... Okay, then, yes, you, you couldn't, there was no way, there was no way to have all the perks in the game. You could get 100 in all of your skill trees, but you couldn't have all the perks in those skill trees. What I meant was the perk. Okay, perk, yes, so, fine. that's what you have in Fallout 4 is perks, but you can get all your perks because there's no hard level cap until you reach all of those perks. I would not have taken advantage of that, because the whole point in limiting how many perk points you get was so that you could specialize your character, and that's what I liked, was having a specialized character rather than a character who is absolutely the best yeah. at everything in the world. That, that, that's all games nowadays, though. Everything, people want all of it. No. <laughs> well, I mean... No. You're, you're still specializing your character through the majority of the game. It, it, they, you're doing what you want, and then at the uh, like, after you've done pretty much everything, that that's when you stop being specialized. And you can pretty much do everything. Have the option there for the people who want it. I don't want it. <laughs> like like right now in Fallout Four, I specialize pretty much in stealth. I've gotten to the point where I could be right next to a person in dim light, not necessarily pure darkness, and they won't see me. I don't get close to them, that, that close to them, before I kill them, because I one-shot them with my bow. There you go. 
Uh, no, I, I just, I, I prefer having a specialized character who who's not good at everything. He's good at this set of skills, and I like it when everybody has to specialize into something different. That's what necessita necessitates, like, teamwork. I like how they've done ESO for that reason. And you can kind of choose how you make your character in that game. I tend to give my characters a personality. Like, on ESO, I recently created a, a mage. Like he's gonna be a, he's gonna be a magic caster and he's going to be the archetypical magic caster where you have to wear light clothing in order to get the magic flowing and all that kind of stuff. In in D and D, that was why magic casters couldn't wear heavy armor was because they took penalties to their spell casting when they did. Um, so at the beginning of the game, I'm looking for clothing, I'm looking for flowy robes and crap like that, and all I'm finding everywhere I look is heavy armor, heavy armor, <laughs> big... Because everyone does heavy armor. Big chunks of plate like... mail, and I put it on so that my character wouldn't be naked, but I'm walking around and, I, you know, I'm thinking in the character's head, I'm like, I hate this heavy armor, it's clunky, I can't cast my spells, it's awful. As soon as I found, like, a t-shirt, I got rid of the heavy breastplate and I put on the t-shirt. I'm like, I don't care if it's just a t-shirt, it's better than wearing the heavy armor. <laughs> hey, everybody! <laughs> Is it hot in here? <laughs> Somebody <laughs> needs to... to get me out of this heavy armor? This breastplate is so, so itchy. itchy. <laughs> <laughs> play with people during this time? I mean, how do you mean play with? Like, okay, so I, I haven't really played Elder Scrolls Online, because I don't have online. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, is it so, like a thing like an MMO where you can see other people even though you're not in their like you're not in a party with them or yeah. just people that are in your party you can see no no it's it's big open world mega server style so okay. there it's instanced so that you go into it say you go into a city honestly in reality there's probably about a million players in that city mm -hmm. because you only it's get a certain but you only see you know maybe a hundred of them or yeah. because yeah, it's instanced like just like any MMO. Right, but you go out in the fields and you see other people running around and collecting items and killing monsters and you can jump in and help them. I mean, that's honestly how I end up in most of my parties, is I'm just wandering around and most of my characters have some ability to heal somebody else. So I will see somebody, sh some low-level guy struggling against a monster. I won't jump in and kill the monster for him, but I'll heal him every time he gets close to death. And... Then after he finally beats the monster, he'll be like, "Hey, thanks. Want to help me with X?" And I'll be like, "I've got nothing better to do. I'll help you out." I just imagine you going around with like at the beginning with that heavy armor <laughs> and like going and helping people. Are like, "Thanks. Wait, why the hell are you wearing the heavy armor? And you're a baby." <laughs> like, because we couldn't find anything else. <laughs> I was going to ask you to help me, but it looks like you don't know much about this game, so I'm going to go. How do I lift the mask on my helmet? <laughs> you have a stupid helmet on, too. But yeah, no, um... God, now you make me want to play Skyrim again. Skyrim's a fun game. I was playing that recently. I was trying to cre recreate some of my D&D &D characters with the, you know, the character creation tool, trying to make them look like how I imagined my characters looked in D&D. &D. Skyrim, unfortunately, had really drab colors to it. Like, you didn't have the color selection that you had in Oblivion, mm -hmm. where you could create basically any color under the sun. It was just like, you have colors 1 through 10. <laughs> Fortunately, I, yeah, I think it, it might have been decision, like, for game quality, but it also might be decision, well, okay, this is kind of up north where it's snowy, so we can't have that much of different of a color palette. Uh, kinda. I think there was also they wanted to simplify it down, because some players end up spending tons and tons and tons of time trying to customize their character. Well, th well that's that's their... I know, I know, I know. I, I don't do that. I, I customize it a little bit, but I don't go that deep into it. But some people were like, I'm spending so much time... This. I don't know. Maybe they... I, I, I can't speak for them. I, I did feel like it must have been taken out. Uh, just because somebody said, we don't need this much customization. How dare you, Bethesda, you made me spend hours <laughs> trying to customize my character. But I, but I noted that I was kind of sad when I tried to create, like, an elf. I chose a high elf, and I wanted to him to have, like, luscious golden hair. And my options for hair was, like, drab, dirty blonde, brown, black, kind of reddish, 
and a different color brown. <laughs> oh, I always just go, uh, I go Khajiit. Khajiits are cool. I've actually never played a Khajiit. Freaking awesome. I did it for Oblivion, <laughs> and I did it for Skyrim, and whenever the next Elder Scrolls comes out, which will probably be in quite a few years since Fallout 4 just came out, yeah. I'll be a Khajiit again. <laughs> I, I think I've found my niche with, with Skyrim as a Nord, and I've started playing Nords in every game, but originally when I was playing through, I always played the race of the game. So, like, in Morrowind, I played a Dark Elf. In Oblivion, I played an Imperial. See, I've never played Morrowind, but sometimes I see people that are saying, like, Morrowind was, like, the best one. Yes, it's a good game. Um, it was a revolutionary game. It was one of the first of those D20 RPGs that was, like, really good. Like, it had all these groundbreaking advances in that, that, that all the games that uh, preceded it, like Thief and Deus Ex, didn't. It did a lot of things better. It had a more organic storyline. It had more interactive NPCs and a more vibrant world, a uh, better first person. It's a great game. I haven't finished it yet, though, because I'm freaking lost, and I've logged, like, ten hours on it, and I'm level two. <laughs> I don't know. I, th I feel like the Elder Scrolls series, a lot of people say that they love Fallout, the Fallout series more than the Elder Scrolls series. I'm kind of different, just because, I don't know, the whole medieval middle earth aspect of it and the i don't know the the terrain just looks because it's not a wasteland it actually looks really beautiful to me i think that's why i like elder scrolls more than fallout yeah malachi are you okay yeah you you like <laughs> falling out of your chair over there man I think you put him to sleep uh i haven't played Elder scrolls at all no what <laughs> you are deprived <laughs> well what about the one rpg game you do play fa uh, final fantasy uh, yeah, that has... The Final Fantasy has been making me sad with the whole... You, like, I miss 11 because I, when it was actually challenging the level of 75 and you were like, you had you had a white mage and people were like, Malachi, you need your white mage, let's go. And I'll be like, yes, I got this. Because you didn't have all your jobs at maximum. Uh, 14 is the same to where you have all your jobs max and there are people at max of everything. And so the party aspect is not as needed. Yeah, it's, yeah, you can be so, well, I can go with this, whatever, and you're just like, well, I want you to go as your strongest thing. Well, that's, that's any of these. And you're just like, uh, They're all maxed out. They're all, and, yeah, they're and, all my strongest. And, and people don't know how to play their jobs because they have all of them. It's like, yeah, you have it, but you're crap at it. <laughs> um, but they did fix the crafting a bit. They've been working on that. Um, now there's uh, specialists. Like, you you can only have three crafts as a specialist. And then it allows them to do specific things that you can't do without being a specialist, which is cool. I like that. When I played Final Fantasy XIV, I only chose two or three of the crafts. I think it was actually two. And I would just do those, even though I was allowed to do all of them. Mm -hmm. You did armor, I remember, and I forget the other one that you were doing. I think when I did armor, I also had to do, like, minor or whatever, so Maybe. that I could get my own minerals. And then I did woodworker at one point so that I could make bows and staves. Um, and so I did botanist. So I could gather my own materials and then make stuff with it. But yeah, like, like I was pointing out earlier, it's just not games nowadays. It's just everything. It's it. They they cater to people being able just to have everything because people always seem to want that. Yeah, they don't like being limited, and I think that Bethesda's always been uh, very guilty of making it so that you can always do everything <laughs> if you want to. Uh, but at the same time, you know that you you still have the option to impose limits, so, like I do, and I still have a great time with Bethesda games. And I think that, you know, uh, when they did ESO, they actually did a good job of saying, look, you can do everything, but you're only going to be able to quickly do five things out of the, hu the hundreds of options you have. So that's what forces you to specialize in ESO, is that if you commit your points, you could probably get most of the skills, but you only get a hot bar of five of the skills. So at any given time, that's what you're specialized as. And you can only quick swap between two different weapon sets and skill sets for those weapons. So you have basically two two jobs that you set up. 
It kind of reminds me a lot of, like, Guild Wars 2. They have that system where you have two different weapons that you can hot swap between, and those weapons have different skills based off of what weapons they are. Yeah, I think it's a good system, honestly. When you're when you're making an online game and your goal is to have people work as a team and you want people's skills to complement each other or supplement each other, as the case may be, then imposing those limitations where, you know, they, they've they got it open-ended because you can start the game as whatever and end the game however you want, and you could do probably most of it in between. You In a situation where you need to be... You know, in combat, you can only hot swap between two things, so you can only be one of two things at, at, at any given time. You can change those out and make it two different things, but at, at, at a moment's notice, you can only be two things. And I think that's a—I thought that was a cool idea. And and the fact that you're limited again in the perk points in ESO makes it so that you're going to want to be committing most of your perk points to those two things. So, multi those games all in general. Is there any other new, you guys don't have any uh, new games else you got over Christmas or New Year's? No, I haven't uh, been gaming too much. I, I mean, I, I, I did beat Halo 5 on, uh, I think it was uh, January 1st. It was either the 1st or the 2nd. And I was like, hmm, I started on a high note. I beat Halo 5 finally. <laughs> <laughs> you finally did it! We can I, finally talk about it. Yes. Uh, Maybe we'll have to have a spoiler cast. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. Halo 5 spoiler cast right as Halo 6 comes out. <laughs> what? Halo 6 isn't going to be out for a while. <laughs> Does anybody else have any anything? Nope, I've been just playing a couple free games. That's all I've been doing. Just some... Uh, like, so what free games? Are you playing them on the computer? Is it like Steam free games or something? Well, you can get them through Steam, but okay. yeah... I, I play Warframe, and uh, I play, picked up Elsword again. It was something I played with my little sister, so that was fun. Oh, and actually, one thing I do want to say is a game that kind of surprised me, and I didn't realize it at first. My friend's like, dude, you should play Alien Isolation. So I was just thinking it was just like an alien, just like not like the aliens. Yeah. Uh-oh. I, yeah. thought, I thought it was just like alien, like like yeah, just, like any old alien. But no, it's it's xenomorphs. Yeah, and I didn't realize that. So I'm, I'm sitting there watching the opening, and I'm watching, and I'm like, okay. And so it's, I was like, this this, this voice sounds so familiar. <laughs> Who is this voice? And then she starts listing off all these names of all the characters in the series. And I'm like, wait, it's these names sound familiar. familiar. And then when she got to the last part, I was like, oh god. It's the Gurney Weaver. It is. And I was like, oh shit, this is going to be fun. Yeah. <laughs> I've been enjoying it quite a bit. It's actually really interesting. Um, It's definitely... Anyone you that's pissed played... your pants yet? No. I did get my face... I did get my skull punctured, though. Oh. Because, <laughs> you know, I knew it was coming. It took one guy. And then I was like, okay, I'm waiting for this, this door to open up. Like, all right, all right. And I sneak in there. I'm trying to be all quiet. And I'm like... And apparently I didn't close the door quick enough. And he's like, hey, what's going on, buddy? Munch. Gonna, gonna eat your brains. <laughs> all he wants to do is eat your brain. <laughs> With my little mouth. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I want to join it too. Get get back in there, little mouth. It's not your turn. I'll let you know when it's your turn. <laughs> Sounds like a robot chicken thing. It's a family guy uh, thing. Okay. <laughs> I, I haven't gotten too far in that yet, but I'm playing that, so it's pretty cool. I, I don't know. The one thing is the main character. Like, I I don't know, like, much about it yet because it's still developing the story with it, but... It's pretty obvious in the beginning, I could say it. It's actually, her name's Amanda Ridley. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, that movie was directed by Ridley Scott. <laughs> now, if only it was Scott Ridley <laughs> instead. Then maybe he could be the granddaddy of that dragon from Metroid. Oh, uh, no, not, not Ridley, Ripley, sorry. Ripley. Not Ripley, there you go. Mm-hmm. Amanda Ripley is the main character of... Uh, the game. I wonder so. what the relationship is because yeah. her name was Ellen in the movie. The little girl she he uh, she or uh, the little girl she saved died at the beginning of Alien Three. Did she? Yeah, Newt. Yo, that's right. That's what her name was. It was. I was trying to remember her name. It was Newt. 
Ah, yes, yes. Okay. I mean, yeah, she had a different name, but she went by Newt, and she was not actually related to Ripley in any way, yeah, shape, or form. Well, yeah, she was found. She was found on the sh the first uh, station that they were at. LV four twenty six. You must. Know, look, how many alien. times? How much? How many times did you watch that movie to remember that? Uh, a lot. Alien. <laughs> alien was one of my favorite movies ever. I've seen it a lot of times. Yeah. LV four two six is the planet they go to. They work for the uh, Wayland Yutani Corporation. Those those face huggers always terrified me. They're just, like just, they're like two hands stuck together. This is terrifying. With a tail. With a tail, and then they grab your face and they lay eggs in you. Did you ever watch the commentaries and stuff with that? No. The, the In the jars, when they were showing those things suspended, it took like six six animatronics guys to control just one of them. Yeah, that was in Aliens. That was in the second movie. Yeah, that's when it, they're looking at it, they think they're dead, and then it sucks up against the side, and one of the one of the marines says to the to the corporation scientist, "Oh, it likes you." <laughs> Love it. He says, "Love at first sight." Good stuff, good stuff. Hey, we got a Star Wars spoiler cast that we got to do, so we got to wrap up. Yes. yes. Yep. So, there's one last thing. It's the uh, question of the week. Question of the week. Question we of been, the we, week. We haven't been doing these lately, but I want to do one. So, since we are now in the new year of 2016. 2016. And they, we know of some games that are going to be coming out this year at different times. I want to ask what is the game that you are looking forward to the most in 2016? It's the question of the week. We let people answer. So you can answer in the comments on the video or you can tweet, tweet us. to us your answer. Yes. It's at player Four podcast <laughs> On the tweeter. On the tweeter. And uh, we read out the answers and we will say our answers next week. On the next Codpast. Yes, the Codpast. <laughs> the Player 4 Codpast. So Oops. who wants to send us out? I want to put you in an envelope and send you to the Antarctic. Is that what you meant? Sure, we'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us, everybody, at this New Year's episode of the Player 4 Podcast. We didn't make mention that we were short of Joseph, but I thought it was kind of obvious. Yes, yes, he wasn't feeling well. Uh, He'll be but... back next week. Yes, he'll be back. We love you, Joseph. Totes. Totes my goats. Totes love that guy. All right. Bye, everybody! Goodbye. So I got my face kicked in. <laughs> All because I chose at the beginning of the game that I wanted to be a cool swordman, swordsman and didn't see a reason to put ranks into daggers.